Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I'm glad to see you again. In one of my previous videos, I've received huge numbers of positive comments requesting that I produce a video on how to merge two Excel data files in XPSS. And now the video is ready and I hope it meets your expectations. Merging two data files are possible in two different procedures, namely the add case procedure and the add variable procedure. But in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to merge two Excel data files in XPSS using the add case procedure. My name is Tito Ken and this is Tito Kemak Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. To merge two data files by method of add case procedure means to add more rows or cases of data to the active data set from an external data file that has the same variable properties. The cases of the two data files can be equal or different. However, whether you are merging active data set in XPSS file with external data file in Excel, or you are merging two different data sets in Excel files, or you are merging two different data sets in XPSS files, there are a few conditions the two data sets must satisfy in order for the two data files to be merged by the method of add case procedure. That is, the two data files you want to merge should have different file names, but the variable properties of the second data file must be defined the same way as the properties of the active data set. That is, the second data file should have the same variable names as the active data set. The second data file should have same variable type as the active data set. The second data file should have same width value as the active data set. The second data file should have same decimal number as the active data set. The second data file should have same column size as the active data set. The second data file should have same alignment as the active data set. And the second data file should have same measure as the active data set. If any of these conditions is violated or not met by the second data file, it will be impossible to merge the two files. So, before you merge your data files, it is required of you to inspect your data files to ensure your data file structure meets those conditions. Now, let's take a look at the data files. These are the two data files in Excel that I want to merge. I want to merge this Excel data file named length and weight records with this other Excel data file named size of fish measurement. And the two data files have the same variable names, but different number of cases or observations. This file has 10 cases, while this other file has 12 cases. However, the cases can be the same or different, and it doesn't really matter for add case procedure. Hopefully, after merging the two files, they will become a singular stream of data file like this where cases 1 to 10 are for data file named length and weight records, and cases 11 to 22 are for data file named size of fish measurement. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Go to the menu bar, click File, and from the sub-menu, put your cursor on Open, and from the drop-down options, click Data. From the Open Data dialog box, navigate to the variable location of your data file. My data file is inside a data folder in my document, and I will navigate there now. This is the folder containing my data files, but no data file in this folder is visible yet because they are not XPSS file. Now, go to the Files of Type column and click the down arrow. Then select Excel from the drop down options and immediately our data files in Excel become visible in this folder. Let's load our first data file into XPSS as our active data set. Now select the file named Length and Weight Records, and then click Open. In the dialog box that opens, ensure Read Variable Names from the first row of data is checked, and then click OK to open the data in the Data View window. 
to learn more about how to load data into XPSS, please see my previous videos on Introduction to XPSS Software for Beginners, Part 1 and Part 2. Now, in this table of data, let's use the ID column as the key variable. Right-click on the ID column and from the drop-down options, select Sort Ascending to sort the ID column in ascending pattern. Please note that this command is very important for you to do because it is the key that helps to synchronize the two files. If you fail to do this, you cannot be able to merge the two files. Now, click on the Variable View button to open the Variable View window. Here, you can define or modify the variable properties where necessary. But for this tutorial, I will leave the variable properties of this active data the way they are. But because I like all my data to be aligned to the same side, I will change the align property of the ID from left to right as the other variables. So I will click on the ID align cell and then select right from the options. To learn how to define or modify variable properties in XPSS, please see my part one and part two videos on introduction to XPSS software for beginners to learn more. The next thing you will have to do now is load the second data file you wish to merge with this active data. So let's load our second file named size of fish measurements. Go to the menu bar again, click on this folder icon named open data document. And this takes us directly to the data folder containing our data files. Again, click on the files of type and from the drop down options, Select Excel to make your data files in Excel become visible in this folder. Then select the second data file named Size of Fish Measurement and then click Open. A short dialog box opens again. As usual, ensure read variable names from the first row of data is checked and then click OK to open the second data file in another SPSA data view window. The second data file will open with the variable view window as the active data set, just like the way I intended it, because I want to compare the five properties. Now, let's minimize this second data file window. Click this icon here called the Restore Down. Now, click on the upper part of this window and drag it down below the fifth row, and then expand the right side to the end of the row column. Like this, you can clearly see the variable properties of the two data files, column by column. As you can see in the properties windows, the variable name are the same, the variable type are the same, the width value are the same, the decimal number are not the same, the column size are the same, the alignments are not the same, and the measure are the same. But because the properties of the second data file must be the same as the active data set, then we have to change the decimals to all zeros as they are in the active data set. So I will change all the one decimal point to zero decimal points like this. Then, click on the ID Align Cell and from the drop-down options, select Right so that they all have the same alignment as the active data set. As you can see, the two data files now have their variable properties defined the same way. Now, go to the Active Data window and on the menu bar, click Data. From the sub-menu, put your cursor on Merge files, and from the drop down options, select Add Cases. Then the Add Cases dialog box opens, requesting you to select a data file to merge with the active data set. In this dialog box, there are two radio button options one, the radio button for an open data set, which presents a box consisting of lists of open data sets in Excel files, and two, 
the radio button for an external XPSS statistics data file. If your second data file you wish to merge with the active data set is an XPSS file, then select this second radio button and then click on Browse and navigate to your data file, select your data file and then click Open. But since for this video, our second data file is another Excel file, we will close this dialog box now and select the first radio button for an open data set. Now, select the data set 2 inside the box and then click Continue. A new dialog box named Add Cases from Dataset 2 opens. This dialog box contains two boxes. The box on the left is called the Unpaired Variables box and it contains the variables that have not been included in the measure, while the box on the right is called the Variables in New Active Dataset, which contains the variables that are included in the measure. Now, if every condition as mentioned earlier is met, the unpaired variable bus on the left will be empty as you can see, while the bus on the right will be populated by the variables in new active dataset. This will be so because the variables of the two data files, including their properties, are defined the same way. As you can see, there is no unpaired variables in the bus on the left, which means all the variables that are in the box on the right are the variables that will be merged from the two data files. If, however, there is any variable you don't wish to include in the measure, you can select the variable and then click on the transfer arrow key to remove the variable and move it to the unpaired variable box. But for this tutorial, I wish to merge all the variables as listed in this box. So, I will proceed to click OK. And just like that, the two data files have become merged as one stream data sets. Now, click on the data view button to proceed to the merged data set in the data view window. As you can see, the two data files have been merged. And from 1 down to 10 are cases of the active data set from the data file named length and weight records. Why? From 11 down to 22 are the data cases we added or merged from the second data file named size of fish measurement. This is how to merge two data files in XPSS using the add case procedure. My next video will demonstrate how to merge two data files in XPSS by adding more variables to the data set. But right now, we have come to the end of this video and I hope you'll be able to replicate the procedures as demonstrated in this video to merge your two data files in XPSS. If you like this video and you wish to see more video contents like this, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we begin to send you notification every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.